Hey cats, it's Ed, Pat Butcher Bud here. As you can hear, I'm still suffering with the old laryngitis. It's not an awful lot above this sort of tone, so I hope it's still pleasing to the ear. Every now and then a shoe comes along that just makes you go. You cats have probably seen that new crazy looking shoe from Puma, the Fast Forward Nitro Elite. It's a shoe that seems to be aimed for that falling off a cliff feeling that we all want while we're running. Let's take a deep dive into this strange design. just about operational. That's good enough. Thanks for joining me on the channel guys, always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help us hit 25,000 subscribers by clicking that button below, but also the bell for notifications of when I smash out those new vids for you. You can help out in terms of the algorithm, the data, the numbers by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running friends. Mucho gracias. It's a really wild design here in this new Puma shoe. Let's take a dive into it and see what we can see. Let's speculate, discuss, and examine. A bit like a running shoe Quincy. So if we rewind to when the Vaporfly Next% Percent was first unveiled, I remember seeing this really grainy image of it and thinking, that surely can't be the next Vaporfly. People didn't believe it at the time. They said, no, nah, it's just some knockoff shoe, some bootleg thing that's just, you know, a fake. But it wasn't, it was, really crazy. I think it was the shape of the shoe, just the, the general sort of profile of it that got people in a tiz. They were genuinely amazed. I remember people saying that it was ugly, it was odd, and it was weird. Fast forward a few years and the next percent's on the feet of loads of people at local races. Doesn't really look all that space age now, does it? It's just the norm now. That's what people expect. And when I put those Addy stars on earlier on to just do some easy miles, and I looked at them and thought, Wow, these look crazy. They look space age. So what do we make of the frankly bonkers looking Puma Fast Forward Nitro Elite? A couple of people even thought this was like a concept or some sort of leaked prototype image. I think it is real. I believe it to be real. So if it isn't, I'll hold my hands up and say, I'm sorry, but I think it's real. I think if there's ever a shoe that's aimed at elite runners only, this is it. A 5k shoe for maximum propulsion only by the looks of it. Looks extremely minimal in the upper with a very transparent mesh. Only a tape-like inclusion on the sides there to give some structure. I think that appears on the lateral or medial sides, perhaps a different colour. I do quite like it on one of the sides there. It does look like the Puma's sort of bouncing. A bit like Zebedee. The toe box is made from some silkworms bred by Puma themselves, which is obviously a complete lie. That isn't where it comes from. It looks a bit like crepe paper around the toe box there. Perhaps to minimize the actual weight a little more. Maybe it only lasts like two or three runs and then the paper just disintegrates. Like when Thanos clicked his fingers. Bayek, it seems a very minimal upper though on this one, doesn't it guys? Scale back even further there by removing some of the material where there would typically be eyelets. This time they've used lace loops. We've seen that on the Nike Rivalfly 3 and the Streak 7 too. There's certainly some Liberate Nitro vibes here about the upper of this new Puma shoe. Around the heel collar especially, it really does remind me of that nice light nimble and very cheap Liberate Nitro. The four foot toe box section as well to me looks like a 70s Adidas track shoe. Almost like baking paper vibes there. Onto the midsole now. Boy oh boy, it's a real corker this one. Tim Gross uh, on one of the forums did suggest that the physios will be you know rubbing their hands with glee looking at this shoe. I think he's right. I do tend to agree with Tim on pretty much all of his observations and uh, he's certainly right on this one. It's a Nike Zoom Fly or Saucony Endorphin Speed rolling like curve in the mid to forefoot but on steroids this time. I think everybody's eyes will be drawn to that extreme lack of foam under the toes. There's a drastic cut out there from the mid to forefoot. It makes the shoe profile almost appear somewhat crocodile-like or similar in some ways to the gaping dragon boss in the popular video game series Dark Souls. Remember this one? See the resemblance? I'm not going crazy. There's a considerable cutout curve in the rear of the shoe too. It's rather reminiscent of the Nike Air Zoom double stack shoe that we saw from 2020. I think that one just sort of disappeared without a trace. Or I guess even similar to the cutaway that we see in the Alpha Fly or the Tempo Next Percent. A carbon plate is included because you're not allowed to release a shoe in 2022 unless it has one. That's the uh, 
new rules. I think the carbon plate there is more visible than a traffic warden on a day you forgot to buy a ticket. The foam used here in the midsole is that Nitro PBAX material rather than the Nitro EVA that we've seen in some of the cheaper Puma shoes. Humorously, Puma have put a message onto the carbon plate in the form of a little label. Could just about make out what it says there, but it advises people not to try to bend the plate as it can still break. But it's written from the point of view of the plate, like the plate has written it to you. I like that. It's a nice little touch. Unclear as to the length, the width, or the shape and profile of that plate as of yet. It does appear to be named differently than previous shoes from Puma. They had the Inno plate. Though this says power plate, so maybe they've charged it up with electricity. I'm joking, of course. Well, just a slightly different shape. Who knows? I'm sure that someone will get a saw and chop it in half at some point and tell us. And then they'll never be able to wear the shoe again. Not sure of the drop on this one, but using the arbitrary method of a straight line, I assume it's a bit more aggressive than the Takumi Sen 8, or the Rebel 2, in fact. It does look a little bit more... Actually, the decoupled section of the midsole there on the medial side of the shoe reminds me a little bit of Puma's own Ultra Ride that I tested out back in 2020. Remember this one, Cats, where you've got this huge cutout here? Certainly reminiscent of that. Even back then, Puma were making good running shoes, but because they didn't have Nike or Adidas written on them, people didn't care. I'm joking, of course. Heaven knows how this one will run, guys. It's really difficult to say, isn't it? Let's bring back a memory somewhere, maybe a video or something I've watched, about how they tried to take out the heel section of the Vaporfly, like one of the very first iterations, because they thought that would minimize the weight of the shoe and marathon runners of that elite level only run in the forefoot. But apparently it just didn't work at all and they had to get rid of it. So perhaps not ideal this one for 26.2 miles of full Snickers. Outside wise, we have a new type of Puma Grip here, which is Puma Grip LT. I presume that means light. Again, trying to reduce the weight down after a gluttonous Christmas session. It does give a snakeskin style scaly vibe to the outsole on this new shoe. The maximum of rubber and exposed midsole removed here from the outsole to get the weight down as much as possible. I would presume this one will be sub 200 grams in my UK size 10 and a half or 11. I think it will come in a little bit under the Deviate Nitro Elite, which was about 220 grams in my size. I actually managed to get a pair, guys. There it is. I keep it in my front room on the mantelpiece, just so that people believe me. What happened was I actually went into the future to get that pair and then came back. They're plentiful in the future, guys, I promise you. I think it's very unlikely that we're going to see this shoe anytime soon. It smacks of limited numbers to me, especially after it's still almost impossible to get a Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. You can buy any of the others in a multitude of different colorways, but... Not that one. I think that shoe came in about 170 Earth credits here in the UK. So I think the fast forward Nitro Elite will probably be a little bit cheaper than that. It doesn't have that range that Deviate Nitro Elite has. So I reckon maybe 160, maybe 155. We shall see. Yeah, certainly lower range beast compared to its long range brethren. Also, I don't think this shoe is gonna be one that everybody wants to try out. I think people will be interested to see what people make of it, but I can't see people shelling out for this one. I think it's going to be one of those impact shoes, perhaps a little bit like the Prime X, although that is now starting to become a shoe people like, rather than it just being this sort of headline grabber, it's actually grabbing people's feet and running, yeah. I just don't see the crossover ability of this shoe really with standard runners. It's going to be an elite shoe. Let's not forget, guys, the time it took the Vaporfly 4% to permeate through to local runners into local races it took some time it took some years to get there i think a shoe of this type certainly gets the tongues wagging though it makes the takumi sen 8 and the rebel 2 seem extremely conventional doesn't it almost as conventional as like a nike tailwind from the 70s what do you make of this crazy puma beast it's a real blast from the future it's hard to even get your head around i suppose those puma cats certainly are not pulling out from innovation or taking some risks. Let us know your feelings on this wild design down in the comments. Very big news for the channel, guys. I am launching the whole members scene very, very soon. There'll be three tiers to the membership so you can help the channel out with various different perks and abilities for each of the different levels. Keep your eyes peeled for more info on that very soon. 
loads of viewers have expressed the desire to help the channel out so this is your way to do it musical interlude time very exciting news about fontaine's dc one of my favorite bands of the last few years it's been ages since a band came along with that kind of subtlety that sincerity and darn right good tunes as well looks like there's a new album going to drop in april of this year they've released one track from the album so far which is called jackie down the line it's got some of the hallmark fontaine's dc vibes about this one slightly more polished production but it still has that gritty vibe which we all enjoy from this band really interesting lyrics always little turns of phrase. It's kind of like listening to uh, maybe an Irish football commentator talking over a man that's attacking a Fender Jaguar with a screwdriver. Nice texture to the drums here and really interesting guitar sounds. I think there's a baritone guitar in there somewhere. Very exciting. I think this bodes well for another great album from Fontaine's DC in April. The first two are smashing, never off my turntable. Go check this one out, guys. Jackie Down the Line by Fontaine's DC. All that's left for me to say is thank you for sticking with me to the end of today's video. It's always appreciated. Hopefully my uh, voice will return to normal very soon. Don't worry, I haven't got any other symptoms or anything like that. I think it's just from talking a lot. If you haven't done so already, help us hit 25,000 subscribers by clicking that button below. But also, the bell for notifications of when we roll them out for you. And you can also help the channel out by giving this video a thumbs up like, but also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.